And Paul Brady and the homes of Donegal. And as promised, I have got Patrick McBrarty in the studio with me tonight. And he is talking about Jimmy's winning matches. And indeed, the homes of Donegal were, were roaring uh, back in 2012. Uh, Patty, you're very welcome. No, thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, that song is incredible, isn't it? Just sitting, listening away there. <laughs> and, and as, as I, I was saying to you before we went on air, my father loved his old time dancing and uh, God rest him. But whenever Paul <laughs> brought out that song, he says he murdered that song. <laughs> I couldn't convince him that it was brilliant, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's that. So uh, it's September I talked to you last. I can't yeah. believe it's September. Yeah, it's mad. And, and uh, you were just about to go on stage in the green and with the border game with the Lyric Theatre. And uh, that went down a treat, Paddy. No, we went we went everywhere. Seepers were all over the country with that. And uh, we did the big tour of it. It went incredibly well. Well, very, very lucky and, and uh, really, really enjoyed the tours. We were everywhere from Limerick to Donegal to Belfast, Dublin, Galway, you know, Monaghan. We were all over the country, which was great, great fun. Uh-huh. And the last time I was talking to you, we, we went through the background and all in oh, the yeah. theatre. And uh, with the Lifford Players, with uh, with the Green production of The Butcher yeah, Boy that's it, and yeah. with the Lyric. But you've taken now a turn at directing. So how does that feel? Well, it, that, it feels great. Like uh, Actually, I'm really enjoying, this is my first time directing, and it's a really enjoyable process. It's a very creative process. You're constantly in creativity, and I really like that. You know, I really like that that feeling. And I love the, the responsibility of the buck stops with me. You know, I make the decisions and that sense and I really enjoy that responsibility and taking that um, and taking that to um, uh, the, the place where it needs to be the show you know because Kieran uh, had written um, a draft a very early draft of this and I helped Kieran kind of all the way through the development uh, be myself and him and we were we got ourselves into kind of the the same playing field with or with mentality wise and we were uh, we understood exactly what each other wanted and uh, so when it came to actually directing the piece um, it um, uh, it uh, they asked me then to to do it because it's such a, a history with the play as it developed, you know. So it was kind of a natural progression, and I was happy to uh, to uh, uh, to take it on. Uh-huh. So yourself and Kieran have been great friends for ages oh, yeah. and ages and ages. And uh, I suppose whenever he wrote the play himself, he had his own interpretation of it. And of course, you uh, with your acting experience have maybe your interpretation. Have you come to blows or are you on the same hymn No, no, less everything that uh, just d- during the development of it, we kind of, the because the play uh, uh, in the background, the play peppers the, the, the journey of Donegal from 92 to 2012. And so the and that's the, the the background of the piece. And I guess I guess the early drafts of the piece, uh, because Kieran is such, uh, this is a love letter to Donegal. This play, it's a love letter to GA and and to Lady Sports as well. And uh, so I think that the GA a- a- aspect was a bit more to the foreground, whereas I uh, uh, wanted him to focus primarily on the um, the father daughter story. And and uh, the real heart of the piece, and and he's uh, and we developed that over, and he's done an incredible job at uh, at telling this beautiful father daughter story, and um, and then so now the GEA and the the journey of GEA and the Donegal team and ladies GEA is peppered in the background, you know. Well, I remember the first time that they won the All Ireland back in 1992. I swore that if I if they ever won, if they ever won an All Ireland final, again, I'd be there. And myself and my friend Maureen, we went it, and we had mm. just it was just incred- an incredible day. That's um, like even 92. And you know, I wouldn't have been very old at the time, but I remember I was in senior infants or uh, senior infants in uh, St Bethan's National School in St Johnson, and I remember Aunt Malloy coming in with the cup, and this giant of a man. Uh, stand in front of you with this cup was probably the size of me you know I just have that vivid memory from then you know and uh, 2012 actually myself and uh, Irla McGowan were on the Caledonian Road uh, in London that's where we had to watch the final and I got all the drama students from uh, from uh, from the drama school that I was in and I got the ball down and ha- they hadn't a clue what was going on and uh, and uh, got them in just to help support and uh, it was a great day and it was a great feeling the 2012. You were saying there that it's, it's a lovely story about a father-daughter mm. relationship, but it's a one-woman show uh, and Louise yeah. Conaghan has the, the challenging task of, of performing. So, uh, Louise, she's a Donegal woman, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she's just, just outside Boba Fay, the lovely Louise. She's an excellent actor and uh, she's bringing this play to life in an incredible way. Um, she's got bags of humour, you know. She'd done a lot, a lot of stuff with and Green and, and uh, John Ruddy, the history of... Uh, uh, Ireland or the uh, uh, Manny Man does 
Ireland History of Ireland or whatever, something I'm sorry about I'm not pr- uh, pronouncing the title correctly but and th- th- her comedy skills are incredible but then this as well she gets to flex her drama muscles and uh, and some beautiful poignant moments and she's excellent um, yeah and the story uh, she plays a lot of characters so it's a father and daughter relationship as you said but is there uh, sadness and fun in this that's the thing It's a, there's a lot a lot of humour and uh, and then there's these beautiful moments of uh of pathos and anger and 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 uh, heartbreak, you know, and as with um, some relationships, you know, um, it's trying to find her father's approval and trying to to for to get her father to notice her, you know, um, uh, over that sibling rivalry of her brother, you know, and trying to be noticed, trying to be seen, and and that uh, there's the eventual pull away and 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 hopefully uh, the coming together again. Um, without ruining the plot. <laughs> and uh, to do a one-person show, um, uh, it's uh, challenging for the actor. Oh, yeah. And it's challenging for the director as well because there, there's nowhere to hide on mm. stage. And, uh, you know, you have to think of the pace, you have to think of the variety just to keep the audience engaged. Did you find, I'm sure Louise found it difficult, mm. but do you find it difficult as a, as a director? Well, as a director, what my role is and any director's role is, is we are the audience. So we are the audience and as we're putting this together, we have to try and see, is that interesting? And is that, uh, is that clear first and foremost? And is that, is it interesting? Is it trying to achieve what the script is uh, trying to achieve? And so that for me, it's, uh, it's basically that audience's view and uh, helping Louise in and out of those characters and making sure that the the transitions are clear and that the story shines through and not to be, um, and that's basically the, the, the role of the director, uh, Louise is that she's the heavy lifting here. There's no doubt, and uh, she has a fortunate characters to make clear and uh, and and also tell the heart of the story, and so uh, and and travel in that thin line of comedy and 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 and, and drama, you know, uh, without it spilling into to something else. And she's she's doing that beautifully. Mm-hmm. And there's a cliff of her on uh, the Green on Facebook page and I think uh, Kieran has it up on his Facebook page as mm-hmm. well and you can see it's like a, a, a light switch. She just goes from one character to the mm-hmm. next and, and she does it extremely well. And it's only 30 seconds of a clip but it gives you a taste of what, what her kids are. Well that's the are. taster of it, yeah that's exactly what uh, what's happening she's uh, that she's switching from things to thing, you know, from comedy to drama in, a, in, a, in an instant and that's the real challenge and delight for an actor you know, a one-person show is, uh, for an actor, one of the hardest things you can do. And it's also a very isolated and lonely place because, you know, uh, you are isolated. You are on your own. So you've only yourself to rely on if, uh, if if things are not going, say, technically in the right direction or whatever. So very, very challenging thing for an actor. But... Uh, and all these characters and the transitions and the humor, like she's got, she got to, she, she gets to play all these different characters from a, a version of David Attenborough to a movie trailer uh, voice, you know. And the David Attenborough section, even um, uh, Kieran's written a gorgeous line, which I laugh at every time. It's the Homo erectus Donegalis. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's absolute brilliance, you know. And that sequence is absolutely hilarious. Uh, and the, it's a pro- pro- professional production as an on green on production yeah. and uh you were telling me before we went on air that the 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 set of the stage and everything's fantastic well this uh, yeah this is a professional production from green theater and it's Kieran Kelly's first professional uh, writing credit as a playwright and he's done a magnificent job you know Kieran's a very astute and very industrious writer you know I think uh, he's one to watch for us to going forward I think he's going to be a real real talent in the playwright uh, uh, and I think he will uh, hopefully take on that mantle maybe of Freeland and in, 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 in the future you know uh, he's a very, very talented writer, and uh, this will not be his last, I'm sure. But um, the set looks um, fantastic. Everything's starting to shape up now. This is, for me, this is, a, as a director, this is a very exciting time to be in. So we've just finished uh, the run-throughs, and now we're in doing the technical rehearsal, which is getting the lights together and uh, getting uh, making sure everything's uh, the sound and the levels and all. This is a very exciting time now for, for me, the director. And then, come Thursday, I do a thing called The Handover. And I, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, my job's done, and then it's over to Louise to 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 take on to take the play and and go out and perform it, which she's no doubt going to do tremendously. Uh-huh. So it's on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night yep. on Green on Theatre, and uh, it's uh, 
not well it's not it's not a full uh, play because it's a one woman show 70 minutes you said I, I that's a, a Kieran originally wanted it uh, because he's very detailed he want he would he wanted it to be around 70 minutes uh, 70 minutes precisely because that's the length of a of a Gaelic football match and uh no, uh, I I got it down to around maybe 60, 63 minutes. But actually, I'll be glad to tell him now as he's listening. Uh, we have we have made it now seventy minutes, Kieran, for you, and uh, so it's now the length of a uh, of a GEA football match, and so that's a a big reveal for you. <laughs> And eight, 8 o'clock start, uh, Patrick. Yes, indeed. 8 o'clock, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And I hope I'll see you there. Fantastic. Well, I, I don't think you have to be a GA fan to go there. If you love Donegal and you love a good play, I think that's that's the two of the most important things. A hundred percent. This is a love letter to Donegal. It's that feeling, that euphoria that we got, that uh, that, that, that brilliant 2012 team gave us. Uh, uh, as a whole county, we got uh, we got that special feeling, and it's the thing. It's doesn't matter in ten years, twenty years, fifty years time if you're still living and well. That we'll never forget that moment, and they give that to us, the Donegal team. So that's very very special, you know. And um, even actually, the, there's a player on the the Donegal team called Patrick McBrady. And uh, he was made Donegal captain this week, you know, and then so I was getting texts from friends and stuff saying, <laughs> hey, it's a big week for you, opening a play and then uh, and getting the captaincy of Donegal. But actually on the poster, um, I was tempted to put, I really wanted to put, uh, you know, written by Kieran Kelly, starring Louise Conaghan and written by Patrick McBrady. No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, 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 it's quite... Uh... Uh, good that Patrick McBrady is now the manager for Donegal and yeah. you're, you are doing uh, you're directing the play about their last uh, yeah, honour two like new things for, for the for the for the for the one man <laughs> <laughs> well thanks a million for taking time out uh, this evening for, to, to, to come in and uh, the best of luck to you and to Louise and to Kieran and uh, myself and John will be there on Thursday night to, to clap you on <laughs> and um, so so looking forward to it thanks so much for having us and all the very best and hopefully I'll see you all there take care station.